Let's find out what happens next. He heard Quirrell's voice. So let's see. <clears throat> no, no, not again, please. It sounded as though someone was threatening him. Harry moved closer. All right, all right, he heard Quirrell sob. Next second, Quirrell came hurrying out of the classroom, straightening his turban. His, he was pale and looked as though he was about to cry. He strode out of sight. Harry didn't think Quirrell hadn't even noticed him. He waited until Quirrell's footsteps had disappeared. Then he peered into the classroom. It was empty, but a door stood ajar at the other end. Harry was about halfway toward it before he remembered what he had promised himself about not meddling. As the, all the same, he had gambled, he had, he'd have gambled 12 sorcerer stones that Snape had just left the room. And from what Harry had just heard, Snape would be walking with a new spring in his step. Quirrell seemed to have given in at last. Harry went back to the library where Hermione was testing Ron on astronomy. Harry told them what he had heard. Snape's done it then, Ron said. If Quirrell told him how to break his anti-dark force spell, they're still fluffy though, Hermione said. Maybe Snape's found out how to get past him without asking Hagrid, said Ron, looking up at the thousands of books surrounding them. I bet there's a book somewhere in here telling you how to get past a giant three-headed dog. So what do we do, Harry? The light of adventure was kindling again in Ron's eyes, but Hermione answered before Harry could. Go to Dumbledore. That's what we should have done ages ago. If we try anything ourselves, we'll be thrown out for sure. But we've got no proof, said Harry. Quirrell's too scared to back us up. Snape's only got to say he doesn't know how the troll got in at Halloween and that he was nowhere near the third floor. What do you, who do you, who do you think they'll believe, him or us? It's not exactly a secret. We hate him. Dumbledore will think we've made it up to get him sacked. Filch couldn't help, wouldn't help us if his life depended on it. He's too friendly with Snape. And the more students to get thrown out, the better, he'll think. And don't forget, we're not supposed to know about the stone or Fluffy. That'll take a lot of explaining. Hermione looked convinced, but Ron didn't. If we just do a bit of poking around. No, said Harry flatly. We've got, we've done enough poking around. He pulled a map of Jupiter toward him and started to learn the names of its moons. The following morning, notes were delivered to Harry, Hermione, and Neville at the breakfast table. They all were the same. Your detention will take place at 11 o'clock tonight. Meet Mr. Filch in the entrance hall. Professor M. McGonagall. Harry had forgotten they still had detentions to do in the foyer, in the foyer over the points that they had lost. He half expected Hermione to complain that this was, that this was a whole night of studying lost, but she didn't say a word. Like Harry, she had felt they had deserved what they had got. <clears throat> Just a second, guys. I'm adjusting. Don't mind my mess behind me. I just feel like putting my feet up. <clears throat> At 11 o'clock that night, they said goodbye to, Her to Ron in the common room and went down to the entrance hall with Neville. Filch was already there, and so was Malfoy. Mal Harry had also forgotten that Malfoy had gotten a detention too. Follow me, said Filch, lighting a lamp and leading them outside. 
I bet you'll think twice about breaking a school rule again, won't you, eh? He said, leering at them. Oh, yes. Hard work and pain are the best teachers, if you ask me. It's just a pity they let the old punishments die out. Hang you by your wrist from the ceiling for a few days. I've got the chains still in my office. Keep them well-oiled in case they're ever needed. Right. Off we go. And don't think of running off now. It'll be worse for you if you do. They marched off across the dark grounds. Neville kept sniffing. Harry wondered what their punishment was going to be. It must be something really horrible, or Filch wouldn't be sounding so delighted. The moon was bright, but clouds scudding across, across it kept throwing them into darkness. Ahead, Harry could see the lighted windows of Hagrid's hut. Then they heard a distant shout. Is that you, Filch? Hurry up. I want to get started. Harry's heart rose. If they were going to be working with Hagrid, it wouldn't be so bad. His relief must have showed in his face because Filch said, I suppose you'll, you think you'll be enjoying yourself with that oaf? Well, think again, boy. It's into the forest you're going, and I'm much mistaken if you'll, be, you'll all come out in one piece. At this, Neville let out a little moan, and Malfoy stopped dead in his tracks. The forest he repeated, and he didn't sound quite as cool as usual. We can't go in there at night. There's all sorts of things in there. Werewolves, I heard. Neville clutched the sleeve of Harry's robe and made a choking noise. That's your problem, isn't it? Said Filch, his voice cracking with glee. Should have thought of them werewolves before you got into trouble, shouldn't you? shouldn't you? Hagrid came striding toward them out of the dark, Fang at his heel. He was carrying a large, his large crossbow and a quiver of arrows hung over his shoulder. About time, he said. I've been waiting for half an hour already. All right, Harry, Hermione. I shouldn't be too friendly to them, Hagrid, said Filch coldly. They're here to be punished after all. That's why you're late, is it? said Hagrid, frowning at Filch. Been le lecturing them, eh? It's not your place to do that. You've done your bit. I'll take over from here. I'll be back at dawn, Filch said, for what's left of them, he added nastily. And he turned and started back toward the castle, his lamp bobbing away in the darkness. Malfoy now turned to Hagrid. I'm not going in that forest, he said, and Harry was pleased to hear the note of panic in his voice. You are if you want to stay at Hogwarts, Hag said Hagrid fierceful, fiercely. You've done wrong and now you've got to pay for it. But this is servant stuff. It's not for students to do. I thought we'd be copying lines or something. If my father knew I was doing this, he'd tell you that's how it is at Hogwarts, Hagrid growled, copying lines. What good's that to anyone? You'll do some of that useful or you'll get out. If you think your father'd rather you were expelled, then get off to the castle and pack. Go on. Malfoy didn't move. He looked at Hagrid furiously, but then dropped his gaze. Right then, said Hagrid. Now, listen carefully, because it's dangerous what we're going to do tonight. And I don't want to, and I don't want no one taking risks. Follow me over here a moment. He led them to the very edge of the forest, holding his lamp up high. He pointed down a narrow winding earth track that disappeared into the thick black trees. A light breeze lifted the hairs, lifted their hair as they looked into the forest. 
Look here, see, said Hagrid. See that stuff shining on the ground? Silvery stuff? That's unicorn blood. There's a unicorn that in there been hurt badly by Sun Summit. This is the second time in a week. I found one dead last Wednesday. We're going to try and find the poor thing. Might have to put it out of its misery. And what if ever it hurt the unicorn finds us first, said Malfoy, unable to keep the fear out of his voice. There's nothing that lives in the forest that'll hurt you if you're with me or Fang, said Hagrid. And keep to the path. Right now, we're going to split up into two parties and follow the trail in different directions. There's blood all over the place. It must have been staggering around since last night, at least. I want Fang, said Malfoy quickly, looking at Fang's long teeth. All right, but I'll warn you, he's a coward, said Hagrid. So me, Harry, and Hermione will go one way, and Draco, Neville, and Fang will go the other. Now, if any of us finds the unicorn, we'll send up green sparks, all right? Get your wands out and practice now. That's it. And if anyone gets into trouble, send up red sparks and we'll all come and find you. So be careful. Let's go.